another quick video today. So I just pulled off and reinstalled my main caps. Um, no, you know, no replacement worthy issues there for anything. Uh, now these are, I believe, uh, program billet aluminum main caps. I, I don't know if that company's still around anymore or not, but uh, you can use these and um, factory Chrysler blocks to try to absorb some vibration. Um, especially when you're using a bigger crank or high, you know, high compression race engine, try to keep some vibration and stress out of the block because they're a little more plasticky compared to glassy. If you're thinking about cast iron versus aluminum. So, uh, they help. You got to have the block, uh, line hone though. When you, when you go to them and they work with these ARP, uh, main studs. So this is how your crank should be when it's installed correctly. Shouldn't be any sound. Shouldn't be anything. See the cam turning in there at half the speed of the crank. Um, yeah, that, I mean, there was a couple, there was a little bit of wear on the bearings, just like break-in wear. Um, there's a couple, you know, lines that follow the bearing around, but nothing I could really feel with my fingernail, nothing that I thought warranted them being replaced. Now the ARP standard is, uh, what is it, 90 pounds, like look at my notes from years and years and years ago, right here, 90 pound ARP main studs, right, but I just randomly found in my other box of books here, the actually, uh, the, uh, the ARP installation guide from who knows when, but it says right in there, if you don't have the ARP lubricant on them, torque them to 130, 90 with the ARP Molly Lube or 130 um, with 30 weight oil. Uh, I kind of split the difference there because I installed them with Molly Lube to begin with. And when I disassembled them, there was still Molly Lube on the washers and stuff. So I just torqued them to 100 pounds because, I mean, it ain't like I dried them off and got rid of all that Molly. There's still Molly in there and stuff. So um, 100 pounds, is, there's just quite a bit of torque on there. I don't think they'll loosen up and give me a problem but you know definitely check this nice free spinning try to get some decent shots of my rod journals too they now this is an eagle forge crank i don't know if it said eagle esp or if, the, if those that acronym still means anything i don't know i think that was on the rods they're eagle rods as well but i have no complaints with it so far the only thing i found is there's a little i think i talked about this the other video there's a weird little blemish in it be hard to pick up right there you can see it about the center of the video when it goes past that light um it seems to be a little negative negative bump in but it didn't do anything to the bearing and it uh it, it you can't feel it you can feel it with your finger but there's no up you know what i mean no raised up and it didn't seem to cause any problem so I'm not really worried about it. It already ran and didn't damage anything. So and it's not like this is a top fuel motor, you know. These things are a lot tougher than people give them credit for sometimes. I think people are freaked out by the smallest blemish and they think it's going to end the world. But you got to be able to decipher what's, a, what's important and what isn't, you know. And that didn't seem to do anything. To, to any of my stuff, so we're gonna live with it. Um, I'll try to flip this over with one hand. It's gonna be a be a task. And we'll take a look into the bores. Maybe I can see a little better into the bores. Watch me knock this whole thing over. That'd be a that'd be shitty. Got to stand on the stand. Oh, there he goes. Okay. Always put your bolt back in the back in your thing, guys. You don't want to hurt yourself. I don't know what we can see in the light here. Still see the cross hatch. So take it easy. <laughs> 